starting the um, Unit 7 lesson with continuation um, and starting to talk about grafting or the process of joining two plants as one. Now grafting can um, take advantage of the best qualities of both the rootstock, the plant that contributes the roots to the plant, and the scion, uh, the plant that is the top portion. And there are a number of different uh, uh, techniques for, um, for doing grafting. Um, a detached scion graft is the most common method. And in this uh, method, the scion is completely detached from the um, parent plant and join to a new rootstock. However, an alternative approach is the approach graft where two plants are joined at a certain point and the resulting plant uh, 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 reflects only the scion parent. So in a approach graft the um, uh, plants are originally merged and kept as two and then the uh, rootstock is cut off at a later date once the uh, once the new scion is established. Uses of grafting? Well generally uh, there are several reasons why uh, grafting is, uh, is employed as a technique. Uh, first is to propagate plants that are difficult to um, to root. So it's an alternative to cuttings uh, that takes advantage of the rootstock, uh, uh, which is already rooted. Second is to provi prov provide disease resistance to um, susceptible um, cultivars. So if you have a, um, a cultivar that is um, prone to getting diseases in the leaves or flowers, uh, one approach to deal with that uh, disease is to graft uh, new um, cyan material onto that plant to give it uh, um, flowers or uh, uh, leaves that are resistant to that disease. And a final uh, use is to rapidly increase the number of the desired cultivar. So one um, plant uh, can produce uh, uh, cyan tissue to go with many rootstock um, plants and um, an entire orchard of uh, new apple trees can be produced rapidly through the use of, uh, of grafting. And then there's some specialized use, uses of uh, the technique of grafting and that's to change plant size and vigor, to repair um, plants that have been damaged, uh, to change the plant form, for instance, from uh, full-size to dwarf uh, plants, and to accomplish virus indexing, and that is uh, to uh, uh, get a uh, plant that's uh, resistant to um, virus diseases. Conditions for success. Well, the plants, the plants must be graft compatible. And what that usually means is that the plants have to be in the same species. Um, but sometimes uh, plants from different uh, species uh, uh, can be grafted, but it is uh, less likely to be uh, a compatible match when that happens. Um, another condition is that the stock um, size is equal to or larger than the scion. So the rootstock um, uh, should not be expected to support a, a scion that's going to produce a much larger plant. Woody plants should be dormant when they're grafted and the cambium tissue, that's the area where the phloem and the xylem are located, uh, the, that tissue uh, will be needed for a successful or the connective tissue will be needed for a successful graft so it, must, it has to be properly aligned for the gra graft junction to heal. And then another um, good idea is to use grafting wax or ties uh, to hold the graft in place to prevent uh, drying out or uh, disease uh, at the graft junction. 
So here's some te uh, techniques. Here's the detached scion methods. Uh, the first one shown here is a, uh, 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 a cleft graph. Uh, the lower one is a, I'm sorry, the, the lower one is a cleft graph and the upper one is a tongue graft. And these are just examples of how um, tissue can be uh, inserted. Uh, once it heals, the growth uh, will be rapid in a, and a it's and then uh, taped or tied uh, tied shut for healing. And then a second example is a patch bud where the uh, uh, cambium layer is uh, is cut, uh, a patch is uh, made of a very similar size, and then again attached over the uh, um, over the parent over the uh, rootstock plant uh, using tape or string. And there's other variations um, using these budding techniques. The next uh, method of um, propagating is use of layering. And uh, the upper illustration here is an example of uh, strawberry, which uh, routinely um, uh, spreads itself through use of runners or stolons and um, most other layering techniques are similar in concept to how strawberries propagate themselves naturally. But in the case of tip layering, uh, a stem of a plant is bent to make uh, soil contact uh, and establish rooting with the uh, tip still attached to the parent plant. And then once rooting has taken place, then the, uh, the rooted tip is cut at the point um, and a new um, shoot will uh, come out of that rooted cutting ready to be um, transplanted at, and um, uh, grown and uh, grown separately from the parent. And suckers are another uh, method of layering uh, usually uh, using the suckers that emerge naturally from the horizontal roots of some plants uh, can be uh, dug up out of the soil and used to form new plants. Uh, this is a technique I've used uh, successfully with uh, several plants, uh, but especially uh, uh, hazelnut. And, in, and uh, in, in some cases I've been able to induce the plant to, um, to form suckers by uh, using a spade to cut uh, into the soil around the main clump um, that encourages the uh, the horizontal roots to uh, sucker and then I take those suckers pot them up and um, eventually use those to establish new clumps of hazelnut around uh, where in, in new locations um, so there's other um, layering methods um, this technique that's illustrated here is uh, air layering and uh, those um, points on the stem where you see the buds in um, photo A are um, sites where new growth will be established, where rooting and new growth will be established. So the stem is damaged, uh, wrapped up uh, with soil, and then uh, after a period of time to allow uh, new roots uh, to form, then that uh, section of the plant is, uh, is cut off, put into soil, and a new plant will result. Um, some of the plants, uh, well one of the plants that is particularly receptive to air layering is the rubber tree and uh, in plant propagation class uh, we will be doing air layering using a rubber plant or a jade plant. But other methods of layering including uh, uh, include uh, uh, simple serpentine trench and mound layering um, but in each case uh, the parent plant is uh, uh, parts of the parent plant are put in the soil 
where they can uh, root and establish new plants. That's the idea of layering. Then uh, in the case of division, uh, clumping plants, and here uh, hostas are illustrated. Hostas uh, are very uh, active, um, growing from uh, divisions. Um, so the plant is uh, divided. Usually a hosta can easily be divided into four new plants. Uh, the new plants are um, split with a shovel or separated by hand, as is illustrated here, and planted in new locations to um, propagate them uh, in that manner. And then crowns, uh, certain plants form distinct crowns, root shoot junctions that can be cut into pieces, each one forming a new plant. Some other specialized underground structures can either be uh, harvested uh, or can be uh, used to induce uh, new um, uh, formation of new propagules. Uh, bulbs are modified leaves, uh, literally fleshy plant leaf scales on a basal plant, a basal plate, and um, bulbs form little bulblets that can be broken off and used as propagules. And a uh, classic example is a scaly bulb of the garlic plant. Uh, if you have garlic bulbs, uh, cloves left over. Uh, stick them in your garden and watch them grow. You'll have, uh, if you plant those garlic um, cloves in spring, you'll have uh, you'll have mature garlic plants uh, usually midsummer. Some other specialized uh, plant structures are corms, um, modified stem, and uh, those. Uh, uh, stems are wrapped in dry scaly leaves. They send up a shoot, which you see in the um, in the photo here, um, which is a um, which will form a new plant. I believe that this is uh, crocus, and crocuses uh, uh, and gladioli are two plants that uh, are frequently propagated using corms. So rhizomes and stolons are uh, horizontal stems, rhizomes underground, stolons above ground. Uh, we talked about stolons already with, uh, uh, with um, strawberries. Uh, rhizome, here we've got a, uh, in this picture we've got a rhizome of grass and you've probably seen uh, uh, this kind of thing going on in your, in your lawn where grass spreads itself just under, under the soil. Uh, through use of these uh, rhizomes. In my uh, native plant propagation, I use rhizomes uh, to propagate uh, uh, fall Solomon seal and um, uh, gray dogwoods and other uh, native plants. So it's quite a common uh, technique. Tubers, uh, we're all familiar with potatoes um, and uh, Potato is uh, is a perfectly good uh, um, example of something you might want to try to uh, propagate for the assignment this week. Um, but if you do, please uh, purchase uh, an organic uh, potato uh, because the most of the supermarket potatoes are irradiated, which um, makes the um, potato uh, sterile and prevents the eyes from uh, developing into new plants. And then there's tuberous roots, uh, swollen roots that produce adventitious roots. Um, and I, I think an example of, uh, well there's a number of examples of this, but uh, um, one example is the uh, uh, common uh, plant dahlia. And the dahlia tuberous roots are stored uh, indoors over the winter uh, because they're not um, hardy for uh, frozen soil. Uh, but if you dig them up, 
store them in a cool space uh, in some uh, um, wood chips or peat moss over the winter, they'll be good to go uh, and propagate new roots, new adventitious roots, and new stems uh, in the spring. So the last technique we're going to cover here is not going to be in much detail, but uh, tissue culture is uh, small amounts of tissue obtained from the parent plant and grown in an artificial medium. So that uh, material is taken, uh, it's called explants, uh, and uh, after it first is removed from the parent plant, it forms a special tissue called callus and uh, that callus is used then um, it, it, to um, form meristems and from the meristems will be um, both root and shoot tissue. So um, many plants are um, can be propagated from uh, using tissue culture and it's a very um, uh, good way to produce hundreds or thousands uh, or many thousands of uh, plants from a small amount of plant material. Uh, it can also be used in embryo rescue, um, saving the embryo uh, from a cross to preserve the desired traits. The, the desired traits. And uh, a new biotech approach uh, is called artificial seeds and that technique is now being used to produce large numbers of embryo uh, clones. In other words, uh, cloning the uh, very uh, tiny, tiny uh, parts of, uh, of embryos and um, dividing them into a few cells and letting each of those cells um, divide and to form new plants very high-tech. So with that, um, I'm wrapping up uh, Unit 7, and I'll talk to you soon when we get to Unit 8.